Right. So this was the part about the domain and ranges of quadratics. And the second thing that I have to talk about is of is very similar to it actually. So a lot of the times they give you some quadratic, right? And they don't tell you the domain. Right. Let's say this is let's actually take a proper one. Right. So this is three comma zero and your this is your quadratic right if you were to expand this would turn out to be this this thing right so they have given you this quadratic and they have told you that okay the domain is such that the x value is greater than or equal to a right and right in the next question they will ask you okay what is the least value of a that you can have Right. So first you would have to understand that when it comes to oops, zoom out a bit, when it comes to inverses, what actually happens and just to recap from uh, just to recap that any function that is any any graph that does not pass the vertical line test, right? Any which means that if you drop a vertical line and it intersects at more than one point, then it is not considered a function. Right. So if I look at my normal quadratic, any quadratics looks something like this, or you can it can even look something like this. But uh, what are, what I am about to talk right now applies to any case. Right. So if I take my any quadratic, and if I try to you know sketch its inverse, what it would look like is something like this right so when if i'm taking my whole quadratic and i'm reflecting it in the line y equals x and uh, reflecting it in the in the line y equals x, x is basically the inverse of it right so if i take this if i take the whole of this and i inverse it i get this and i know that this does not pass the vertical line test so this is not a function Right. Just uh, just to show you quickly, this is the graph of y equals x square. This is the graph. Uh, this is the inverse of it, which would be plus or my y equals plus or minus uh, root of x. And if you're coming from the previous videos, you'll know that this is definitely not a function. Right. So if you're taking the quadratic as a whole, it can definite it's it cannot have an inverse because the inverse would not be a function what you could do is if you took a part of it so let's say if i take if for the same graph if i take this part right if i take this part and if i reflect it in the line y equals x it looks something like this now this is definitely passing the vertical line test right so this is actually a function which means that this is invertible which means that if I restrict my quadratic to certain values, I can make it have an inverse, right? So what really happens is that a quadratic is symmet let's say this is the turning point P comma Q, a turning point is symmetrical about the line uh, X equals P. And just to show you quickly why that makes sense is because X minus P, let's say X minus P squared plus Q, right? So when x is equal to p, you get 0 squared plus q, right? So you get the value q, right? And then after, if you take any value greater than p, then it will obviously be some positive number plus q. So it will be a y value greater than q, right? And even if I take some value less than q, it will become some negative value squared plus q, which is basically some positive value plus q and it will be above q right so to the right of p the y value is greater to the left of p the y value is greater so this is the least value you get and you can convince yourself for you will convince you can convince yourself the same for the negative case where p comma q will basically be the max you can get right so if i take let me take a 
an example just to show you uh, let's take two right so in this case my p q are three comma two right the reason why a quadratic is um, symmetrical about the line y equals p is because let's say i take one value more than q right so if i take four minus three whole square plus two it will become one squared plus two it will be three right so if i move one unit here i end up at three and if i take one value less than q right so two minus three plus two it will be negative one squared plus two this will be one plus two which will be three so if i take one unit to the right of q i also end up at three right so this should be some affirmation that okay a quadratic should uh, intuitively be symmetrical right so now that you agree with me that a quadratic uh, should be symmetrical about the line y equals uh, x equals p you would also agree with me that as long as i am taking some value as long as i am taking one half of the quadratic then it should have an inverse sorry about that it should have an inverse so basically if i'm taking any values if i'm taking this half including the turning point or if i'm taking this half including the turning point then it will have an inverse right because let's say i take this right so this is the turning point and to the right of turning point the y value is increasing to the left of the turning point the the y value is also increasing right so if i try to make it inverse it will look something like this and i know that i can drop my vertical line right over here so that uh, it does not pass the vertical line test hence it is not a function right so whenever you're whenever you're restricting the domain the maximum you can do is include the turning point and any values that are either to the right of it or to the left of it so coming back to the question of this the short answer is that a is simply the value p right a is simply the x coordinate of p that's the short answer and cambridge keeps on asking this again and again and the answer won't change right they can change the question like what is uh, let's say that the do domain is less than or equal to a so what's the maximum value of a what all they're saying is that okay this is your quadratic let me draw a neater quadratic this is your quadratic right this is some value a right so what is the maximum value of a you can uh, you can take such that it will have an inverse right so if i take if i let's just draw this if i take this value let's say this negative 4 it is it will have an inverse but i can also take a smaller value negative three and it will also have an inverse right so if i keep doing this i will eventually end up at, a, at the turning point and the turning point is the least value is the maximum value uh, for which it will have an inverse if i if i increase my x a bit more then i'm taking the other half of the quadratic as well all right and this is uh this is not all for inverses there's just one little bit more part the little bit more part is basically how do you find inverses and it's basically the same way but uh, i should just show you so that you're more comfortable with it so let's just say there's some y equals x minus 3 whole square plus 2 right and let's say this is for x greater than or equal to 3 right so what this looks in a graph is that okay this is 3 comma 2 and you're taking all these values all right so just as with any inverse you make y the subject so y minus 2 is equal to x minus 3 whole square and then you take the root y minus 2 is equal to x minus 3 right and now you might say okay this can be either plus or minus and you're completely right so the rule is that if you're taking the right hand side of the quadratic then you take then you take the plus sign right so here it was greater than or equal to 3 any any value greater than or equal to 3 so if we're taking the right hand side we took the plus sign if we were if the domain was x is less than or equal to 3 so we would take the negative one right and you can check around why that makes sense 
uh, it's easy to see when you're when you're sketching them right so here since we're taking the right hand side I took the plus sign so y minus 2 3 plus y minus 2 is equal to x so your f inverse is basically 3 plus root of x minus 2 right and again this is this has been uh, covered in the previous video of uh, inverses I think but just to give you a quick re recap and when you find inverses you basically switch the range and uh, you basically switch the domain and the ranges right so if its domain was x is greater than or equal to 3 this will be the range of f inverse right whatever its its range would be uh, its range would be that it is greater than or equal to 2 so this will be the new domain of 2 this will be the new domain of f inverse right and this is mainly because uh, uh, that f inverse you're basically reflecting it in the line y equals x so you can see it as sort of a, uh, a rotation uh, a sort, sort of like swapping the x and the y's right so if you're swapping the x and the y's so you should also swap the domains and the ranges right and this is it for quadratics there's uh, no more to it but you get a lot of questions in quadratics so it should be something that is uh, second nature to you all right